Hello and welcome to Research Methods Lesson 4, where we're going to look at types of experiments. Over the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to go through what the different types of experiments are, what their strengths and limitations are, and also we'll have a look at a couple of exam questions so that you can see what this could come up as in an exam. So just as a quick recap from the very beginning of research methods, all experiments involve a change in the independent variable and then the researcher takes note of the effect of this change on the dependent variable. However, how the IV changes and under which circumstances it changes varies from one type of experiment to another. There are four types of experiments that you need to know about for A-level psychology. Each one of these has got its own strengths and limitations, and each one of these has got its own strengths and limitations that you need to know about. The four types of experiments are lab experiments, field experiments, natural experiments, and quasi-experiments. And over the next couple of slides, I'm going to go through with you what each of them are, what their strengths and limitations are, and what their strengths and limitations are. We're going to do it slightly differently in this video, and I'm going to give you the strengths and limitations associated with the types of experiments straight away, rather than giving them all to you at the end, simply because there isn't really that much to say about each of the different types of experiments, so it makes sense to give it to you all in one go, rather than separating it out. Okay, here we go, let's start with lab experiments. So, um, lab experiments are experiments that are conducted in highly controlled environments. They don't necessarily always have to be a lab, but one way or the other, the researcher has control over everything that goes on. The IV, the extraneous variables, the confounding variables, he should, the researcher should have been able to control for everything. A lot of the research that you will have come across in the first couple of chapters in psychology are lab studies. So things like Ash's research, Milgram's research, Moscovici, um, and also a lot of the memory studies as well are all lab studies. Now the strengths of a lab study, now the strengths of a lab experiment are the fact that they have lots of control over extraneous variables and confounding variables, which means that researchers will have hopefully managed to reduce their impact on the DV. And also the fact that because everything is so controlled, there's a high level of, re of replication, which means that another researcher can, can, can come in and repeat the study and then... Um, and that adds validity to the initial findings. However, the downside of lab experiments um, is that they generally have low external validity. Um, and that's because of something known as mundane realism. So mundane realism refers to how realistic the materials and the procedures that are used in the experiments actually are in comparison to real life. Obviously, research that is conducted should replicate real life experiences as much as possible um, and if we're going to learn about how things may affect us in the real world um, if we're going to learn how things may affect us in the real world however unfortunately a low levels of mundane realism often means that research may not accurately represent real life experiences and therefore it provides low external validity and then finally, um, there's also a chance of demand characteristics. Um, unfortunately, people often know that they are in a study and then they do their best to find out what the study is all about. Um, and then they change their behavior, which means that they're no longer acting naturally. Okay, so that can impact the validity of your findings. Our next type of experiment is a field experiment. Now in a field experiment the IV is manipulated by the experimenter in a natural everyday setting. Okay so like on the streets, um, at work, on a bus, wherever. 
Okay. Um, an example of a field experiment would be something like Johnson and Scott's research into anxiety and eyewitness testimony. Now, depending on how far through the course you are, some of you may know what that is and some of you may not. I'm not going to go into it now because I don't want to spoil it for those people who haven't heard about it yet. However, that is an example of a field study. Also, um, research that's looked into the bystander effect, for example, where somebody would collapse in a public place and then the, re the reaction of the people around them is observed, that would also be a field study. Okay, so there's lots of examples um, that you can kind of use for that. If you're interested, there's an interesting one on YouTube, um, which was Ashes experiment into group think and that's the image at the bottom of the screen there if you just go to youtube and type in elevator group think experiment you'll see what that's all about um, i'll put a link in the description section below as well and you can click on it there um, but that's also a nice example of a field experiment now, strengths of field experiments are obviously higher mundane realism and higher external validity because they are done in a natural setting. Okay, so that kind of eliminates one of the issues that they have with field with lab experiments. However, weaknesses that come hand in hand with that is a lack of control over extraneous variables and confounding variables, which means that it becomes just a tiny little bit harder to establish cause and effect. Um, there's also ethical issues that come hand in hand with field experiments because uh, very often the participants don't know that they are participating in an experiment, which then um, creates issues over consent. Okay. Moving on. Our next type of experiment is a quasi-experiment. Now, a quasi-experiment is a little bit different um, because it's an experiment that looks at the impact of pre-existing differences between people. So, in a quasi-experiment, the IV is based on and is based on a pre-existing difference between um, a group of people, whether that difference is age or gender ethnicity, uh, smoker versus non-smokers, presence of a mental health condition, anything like that um, would count as a pre-existing difference. No one can manipulate that IV, it simply exists and it cannot be changed. Strengths of a quasi-experiment are that they are often carried out in controlled conditions, so they have a lot of the same strengths as lab studies do. However, limitations are that confounding variables can become an issue because researchers cannot randomly allocate participants to the separate conditions because um, the conditions are created by the differences between people. Right, moving on to our final type of experiment, that is the natural experiment. In a natural experiment, the researcher takes advantage of something that is already happening or has happened. The IV is something that can't be controlled or changed, and it's something that would have occurred or would have been going on, um, whether the experimenter was there to to study it or not. Uh, so something like a natural disaster, let's say. The term natural, therefore, refers to the fact that the IV is naturally occurring, not the fact that the setting of the research is natural. Okay. So strengths of a natural experiment are that it provides the opportunity to research something that may otherwise not be easy to study um, for practical reasons or for ethical reasons. Um, ethical reasons, for example, may be um, researchers are very often keen and interested in studying the impact of maternal deprivation on on attachment. However, um, it would be very unethical to deprive an infant of their caregiver um, and so you very often have to wait for something like that to happen. Um, so that would be an ethical reason why you can't just set up one of these studies. Um, obviously the fact that it is a naturally occurring IV, is that right? 
Yeah. Also, the fact that it is a naturally occurring IV um, comes in hand in hand with the fact that there is high external validity as well. Um, however, limitations are things like things that are worth researching only happen very rarely so um, it might take away a while for something to come along that you actually want to study like natural disasters they don't just happen every day um, so it can take a little bit of time for something to come about um, also it may not be possible to randomly allocate participants to different conditions particularly if you are using an independent group's design again because the IV is naturally occurring um, the event or whatever it is that you're studying will determine what the IV is is. Okay, so on the next slide, um, I've got just four examples of real life research that was conducted. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video in just a sec, give them all a read through and see if you can work out which is which type of experiment. Okay, so here are the answers. The first one is a quasi experiment because it looks at pre existing differences between um, children. The second one is a field study because the researcher was manipulating the IV, which was um, person collapsing, carrying a walking stick or smelling of alcohol. However, it was manipulated in a real world setting. The third one was the natural study because TV would have been introduced in that Canadian town one way or the other and aggression levels would have increased one way or another. That was just something that was happening and the researchers took advantage of that. And then the final one is a lab study because the researchers were able to manipulate the IV, they were able to control the conditions, and they were able to assess uh, the impact of the IV on the DV. Okay? So, just moving on then, um, I've got a little bit of an extra concept for you here, which is something called a true experiment. Um, now, although this isn't specifically named on the specification, it seems to appear in the majority of textbooks, so it doesn't really hurt to cover all of our bases. So, our four types of experiment can be further split into two categories, depending on whether or not the experiment is considered to be true or not depending on whether or not the type of experiment is considered to be true or not. Now, true experiments refer to experiments where the IV is under direct control of the experimenter. The IV can be manipulated, and its effect on the DV can be recorded. Now, bearing that in mind, lab experiments and field experiments can be considered true experiments. However, natural and quasi-experiments cannot be considered true experiments as the IV is not under the direct control of the researcher. In a natural experiment, the IV changes or occurs naturally, and in a quasi-experiment, the IV is pre-existing and therefore not under the control of the experimenter. Okay, so like I said, it's not in... The specification, however, it is in all, of the, text, all the textbooks, so um, if it comes up in an exam, then at least you've heard it, and if it doesn't, then no harm, no foul. Okay, so as with before, I've got a couple of examples for you there, so just pause the video and see if you can work out which is the true experiment and which isn't. Okay, here are the answers. So they were all not true experiments, except number two. Okay, so in number one, the... IV was naturally occurring because they either studied sociology or psychology. Um, in number three, the verbal ability of students who use social networking sites or those who don't use social networking sites, well, they either do or they don't, um, unless the researcher actually specifically told the groups not to use social networking sites, um, that would also not be a true experiment. Um, and then the last one is male versus female. So again, you can't directly manipulate the IV because you either are male or female and therefore you go in a condition, in one condition or the other. Um, number two is the only true experiment um, because provided the psychology, provided the researcher actually tells them which group to go in, um, the, the researcher has control over the IV. Okay, so we're just going to finish up then um, with some exam practice. So this is an example of how types of experiments could come up in 
the exam. Uh, very often they are mixed in with questions on other research methods topics like experimental design um, or something like that. So you've just got six questions there. Feel free to pause the video and answer those questions. The next slide's got the answers on, so I'll leave that up um, for a couple of seconds as well, and then you can pause and grab the answers if you need to. Okay, so there are the answers. And that is the end of the video. So I hope it's all made sense and I hope it's been useful. Um, please feel free to put any questions in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for listening.